What if you could go to a place that no longer exists? Turn left at the next exit. A place where the smoldering earth breathes smoke from an underground inferno burning for over 40 years. Last on Main Street. A place whose population has dwindled from over 2,000 to just six people. Turn right at the next street. A place where the very air you breathe is a poisonous fume of sulfuric acid. South on Westbrook. Place just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Would you take the risk? Centralia, Pennsylvania was never a particularly large community, but it was once a lively and industrial place. At its peak, the coal mining town was home to 2,761 souls, but today the population of its cemeteries far outnumbers that of its living residents. I lived there all my life, 16 years, 17 years. I went to school in Centralia for up to fourth grade, then I went to Mount Carmel. A series of events which led to the community's demise, slowly diminishing its numbers to less than six people, began about 44 years ago. In 1962, workers set a heap of trash ablaze in an abandoned mine pit which was used in the borough's landfill. The burning of excess trash was a common practice, yet at that particular time and place there existed a dangerous condition. It wasn't that uncommon for people to throw garbage into old stripping pits. And that was an old stripping pit. They were digging out coal that was fairly close to the surface. And people threw their garbage in there, and every once in a while they would burn it just for the heck of it. It kind of knocked down the smell a bit. And, well, garden variety entertainment on a Saturday night, they'd all go up to rifles or 22s and shoot the rats that ran out. And uh, apparently the local hosey came up and they hosed it down pretty good. But they didn't know that a vein of coal that was exposed at the bottom had caught fire. And when that happened, they'd go up again with their hoses and, you know, water down again. And suffice it to say, a long story short, the Kintamaya fire got started then. Soon the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Resources began monitoring the fire by drilling holes into the earth to determine the extent and temperature of the fire. In retrospect, it was realized that the well-meaning workers may have unwittingly provided the fire with a natural draft by drilling these boreholes, feeding the coal's combustion. As a precaution, the department also installed gas monitors to many homes within the affected area, but nonetheless many residents complained of symptoms of carbon monoxide exposure. There was a lot of hardships. Everybody did not want to go out because there's about how many homes in there, five or six left. And it really took a toll on my grandmother. She did not want to go, but then she happened to die. And you could smell the sulfur in the land in our bottom of her home, you know, through our home. In its prime, Centralia was a vibrant community with five hotels, seven churches, 19 general stores, two jewelry stores, and about 26 saloons. Today, it is a modern ghost town whose guts have been burned out. All my, all my uh, family is buried there. It's really hard when you go there, but it's very heartbreaking. Residents are expected to return in 2016 to open a time capsule which was buried in the town back in 1966, back when the town's future was still somewhat optimistic. Its future is now decidedly more grim. There are currently no future plans to extinguish the fire, and most modern maps no longer show a dot where Centralia once stood. What do I think is going to happen in the future? Two possibilities. Well, actually, really just one. The state really doesn't seem to be all that anxious to evict anybody. Technically, right now, this property and all the other properties in the borough are owned by the state. 
and not being a property owner, the state is the, hold, the holder of the deed. They could say to me, they could send me a letter in the mail tomorrow registered that they would like me to be out of this premises by a certain date. I really don't believe the state will do that. They haven't done it in the last almost 15 years now. And they haven't expressed any real strong desire to do that. My own hope is that either the present situation continues or maybe that the state might be willing to in the future say something along the lines, well, listen, you know, folks, we've given you enough opportunities to relocate. You haven't taken those opportunities. We're going to give you back your properties. You're stuck in Centralia now, and we're out of here. And I suspect I can safely say that I speak for pretty much everybody else in the borough. That would make us all happy. However, the town isn't as dangerous as most people describe. Even though the small town of Centralia had a very dramatic and intense history, the current residents who are living there are enjoying a nice, peaceful life. The image people have of Centralia and the reality, like you see behind me, is dramatically different. Folks come, sometimes come to Centralia and don't realize they're here. If you think living in Centralia is um, a bunch of smoking holes with houses half hanging into them, then you might wonder why it is I want to live here. But if you see it's houses interspersed with a lot of trees, then um, it gives it a whole, new, a whole new spin. And actually, I like living in a house separated by a lot of trees between the folks I have as neighbors. We all get along really well with each other. We help each other out. We just don't have anybody in each other's faces anymore, and I really like that. If I thought I was in any physical danger, from gas to subsidence, I believe I'm not any big hero. It's not like I have any, you know, I don't have any particular attachment to this piece of property other than the fact that I like to live here. If I thought I was in danger, I'd be gone.